A little bit about me. Uh, I'm from Los Angeles and uh, or West Hollywood. I live in West Hollywood and I teach in uh, Los Angeles. I teach uh, drawing and painting uh, to 5 to 14 year olds and I also teach seniors uh, in uh, East Los Angeles. I just received my grant uh, this past March. And I approached the city supervisor out there because uh, we had a cut in our uh, schools, uh, the painting, or excuse me, art had been cut in our school systems and that really affected me as an artist, uh, kind of personally, uh, because always, art was always the first thing to go. So I approached the, the city supervisor and I said, hey, you know, I really want to teach art, you know, Let's, let's meet and talk about this. I really didn't expect that the city supervisor would uh, contact me and say, uh, who are you, let's, let's have lunch and talk about this. But to my surprise, they said, okay, let's, let's talk about this. We had a meeting. I was prepared with a benefit cost analysis of what it would cost to uh, teach art for uh, six months, so I had my numbers ready to go. And uh, they said, okay, we'll, we'll let you teach and we're ready to go with this. So um, now uh, here I am uh, later with uh, teaching uh, three classes a week uh, in Los Angeles and uh, very happy with that. Also uh, what I do uh, is uh, I paint full time at the Santa Fe Art Colony as a resident artist there. And I uh, work with two galleries, um, one on the West Coast and one on the East Coast, uh, Gallery 825 and uh, in Chelsea at Bogora Gallery. So that's kind of boring. My paintings haven't always been kind of bright and colorful. They've been kind of uh, macabre and kind of uh, dark, um, the uh, paintings were uh, kind of uh, really uh, black and kind of uh, dreary. Uh, in 2008 and before I had this uh, seizure disorder and uh, I was really kind of suffering as a person and as you, you can kind of look at them, they uh, had this uh, kind of icky thing of going on. They were kind of uh, dark like this. So art's kind of, it can be kind of healing as, uh, I don't know, you can kind of take a little look, pass around when you're finished. But um, I uh, went down, <laughs> kind of so to speak, in uh, 2008. Uh, from uh, epilepsy uh, and I went into a coma and uh, the coma kind of reset something in my brain. The uh, doctors really didn't know what happened after that. The uh, painting kind of healed me and kind of reset me after that and this particular painting kind of is a representation of what happened after that. This builds a play. Um, after that, uh, I, I've always kind of painted, but uh, Fields of Play kind of been before uh, I had Fields this, of Play uh, kind of is a disorder. representation of and something that bloomed within me and my life and uh, in my spirit. Uh, I, I can't really explain what happened and neither can my neurologists. It's uh, sometimes art is, is something that we just have to accept that it can be healing. Um, I can also draw something or draw within an analogy in my life of uh, something that happened back in uh, middle school. There was a time when I had a really bad stammering problem and art therapy uh, there was something called Silent Reading Academy. I don't know if anybody has children or anything, but there was a time where we had to read on these silent index cards, and it was called SRA, and we had these, uh, I didn't know what art therapy was at the time, but they gave us these exercises where we had to draw out the words we were trying to pronounce. 
and I look back and I'm just, you know, now getting to the point where I can remember where we had this uh, teacher and when we couldn't pronounce a word, we would have to draw it. So now as a, as a teacher, you know, I think that's kind of influenced me as uh, to be a teacher and to, uh, to uh, draw such nice things. So that's the importance of giving back and, and drawing and painting in my life. And a little bit more about me as a, a, where I've uh, studied art and who I've studied with. I studied at the Art Students League in New York with uh, two uh, abstract expressionists, Larry Poons and Ronnie Landfield. Uh, I don't know if anybody knows who they are. They uh, work with Jackson Pollock. Anybody knows who they are? No. And uh, they kind of encouraged me uh, I guess in uh, 2007 to get my own studio. I was uh, uh, painting one night with uh, Ronnie Landfield's assistant and he came up to me and he's, he said, um, that painting's good. And I was like, oh, thanks. And he was like, oh, you don't know who I am. And I was like, no, um, should I? And he's like, yeah, when you go home, Google me. <laughs> and I was like, oh, thanks, I will. And so I did, and, and then eventually that led to getting into a studio. So, uh, but I think everybody should uh, just, uh, you know, draw our pain, and, you know, regardless of who they are. I don't think that, you know, a name is that important to a person. You know, everybody should just uh, encourage everybody to be an artist because everybody is an artist and especially children so and the, I guess that's my story as an artist they are now, yeah. All of my so paintings. So your coma are. actually reset you. So it's, that's like the first time I've heard that a coma turned out well for someone. <laughs> yeah, I haven't. I I'm just now starting to talk with other people who've been through, uh, you know, kind of a coma, and I'm just starting to reach out to other people who've been through, I guess, yeah. epilepsy and things. But such uh, a difficult disease. Well, I bet I. I mean, it can be uh, from an experience in your life, too, that something tragic happens in your life, and you go through a dead stage through maybe a year or two. Then little by little, you start drawing back out of it and becoming back into life again. And you go through different tragedies in your life, mm -hmm. and you do go on that dark side for a while. But then little by little, and being creative, and gardening, and all that pulls you out of that. It's, but it doesn't happen overnight. Right. It no, takes time. Yeah. It's all a healing process. You gotta keep keep at it, right. you know. And eventually, you know, you just gravitate towards it. And it's a good feeling. Hmm? Right. I you think know, I think that staying creative, you know, and I think it regenerates something inside you if you if you stay creative. <laughs> Even if you know writing, whatever yeah. it happens when to be. When you do a painting, do you think of the title after, or do you do it? Think of the title during it, and does it influence you? No, I do like the field uh, of, fields of play. So it's like you think of it late in this. I do process. a lot of. Oh, I didn't speak of the. A lot of my uh, uh, paintings come from the the dream journal, which I keep a dream journal. Uh, this is the dream journal, and I write down at night whether I wake up uh, if it's two or three o'clock in the morning. I write down every thought that I have. And then I go into analysis every week with a union analyst. Oh, really? I do. It's an important process. And a lot of my titles come from the uh, uh, dream journal. Yeah, very dramatic dreams and very movie-like ones. And my, I, I mean, I, I have a whole other life when I sleep. This is like a whole... I wake up exhausted sometimes, just exhausted. And people tell me I should keep writing. They write their movies, they'll continue day after day. It's a whole series of events. And it's, they, I've been told that a long time ago to write a journal. Do you? Keep it. Do you track yourself? I, I review everything I dreamt about. I review it the, mm -hmm. that morning. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And the people in it and this, but it's like... 
It is. Color. A lot of it. I mean, I've been keeping uh, dream journals now for about uh, three years. And have, it's have, pretty have, lucid dreaming. Color, yeah. the, uh, what period of time did you cover? Was that recent or is that overall? That particular period? dream journal is about two years old. Oh, okay. Uh, I, I just brought it for an example. Yeah. Yeah.